Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about completely strain gauges. So, what do you mean by strain gauge? What are the different types of uh, strain gauges we have? How they are working? I will tell everything. So, strain gauge is nothing but the strain gauge is a passive resistive network, passive resistive transducer which converts mechanical elong elongation or compression into a resistance change. Okay. Suppose one wire is there. Suppose one wire is there like this. Consider what do you mean by strain gauge? I am saying one wire is there which is having some width. Okay. The width is indicated by W. And R is equal to we know rho L by A. So what do you mean by A? A is equal to length into W. Suppose this material, this resist, uh, this conducting wire is having a property whenever we are applying some pressure on this, the width of this wire may decrease because, because of the compression, because of the compression. So when we are applying a highest pressure on this, pressure on this, what happens? The width of this conducting wire may reduce. Okay, previously it is having some width, but when we are applying some pressure, it is having the compression method so, so that the width of the uh, connecting wire may decrease. So, what happens when the width of the connecting wire decreases? Area decreases. What happens when area decreases, resistance value increases? Okay, so when we are applying the pressure on this particular connecting wire, it results to the change in the resistance value. This is what the strain gauge is. So we are applying some strain, pressure is nothing but some strain. Strain on this, immediately it results the value of the resistance. Okay, in the same way, we can also uh, say, calculate the resistance of any particular, suppose if uh, uh, railway track is there, on this railway track, train is moving. So, what is the amount of pressure that uh, the strain that the track feels also we can calculate using the strain gauge. Okay. So, this is what the strain gauge meaning is and in the similar way compression or uh, elongation also we can expand the uh, wire or we can compress the wire so that the resultant resistance value will change. So, this change in resistance takes place due to variation in length and cross-sectional area of the gauge wire when an external force acts on it. This is what I have explained till now. So, there are uh, different types of classifications. So, basically, strain gauges are classified based upon the type of material used to construct any strain gauge. So, strain gauges are broadly classified into metallic strain gauge and semiconductor strain gas, metallic strain gas and semiconductor strain gas. <clears throat> so, in the metallic strain gas, we are taking again two categories that is bounded and unbounded. Bounded and unbounded. So, in bounded, again there are three types of uh, different materials are there. In bounded, we can use wired or metal foil or rosette type. Okay. So, we are going to explain what do you mean by bonded type, what do you mean by unbounded type strain gauges in this video. So, this is the example how strain gauge works and what is the impact that the strain gauge causes in the voltage or current whatever we are going to measure. So, strain gauge is nothing but here this is the strain gauge we have taken a metal foil wire, uh, metal foil wire see from here how it is appearing like we are having a point here. From here to, we are having a metal wire, that metal wire is connected like this. These are the two points we are taking output where we are taking the either voltage or current or applying some voltage or current on this metal foil. So, gauge resistance wires, we can call these uh, terms as gauge resistance wires and direction of the strain. <coughs> direction of the strain. So, how we are applying the strain, we can along, we can apply some elongation or compression on this one. Suppose, apply some pressure on this. So, what happens? It will be compressed inside or pull this outside. We can give some elongation in this. So, depending upon the elongation or compression, the resistance of this or the metallic foil may expand or compress because of the external pressure. So, because of that what happens, the resistance will vary. 
okay i already told you how this resistance will vary resistance equal to rho l by a until and unless there is a change in the length and area r will not vary so suppose if any compression or expansion occurs on this one definitely the resistance l and a varies resistance value will vary suppose how it is working in the measurement of any calculation part suppose consider this bridge what is this bridge it is a wedge turns bridge if you observe it is a wedge turns bridge wedge turns bridge so wedge turns bridge what is the purpose of wedge turns bridge it is used to calculate the resistance of resistance of any unknown device or uh, suppose unknown resistance we are going to calculate using this bridge with that unknown resistance we are connecting at any one of the arms of this bridge in the four arms okay now we are connecting a strain gauge what i have explained here the metallic foil strain gauge is connected at this point in as one of the arms of this bridge now until and unless there is a change in the resistance value that means when there is no pressure there is no force on this strain gauge simply it gives a resistance value let us consider this resistance as r4 then with this r4 value when there is no pressure on it with this r4 value there is a, the bridge is balanced happily the bridge is balanced so that there is no deflection through this voltmeter voltmeter shows simply zero so when balanced when balanced simply it shows zero okay suppose we are applying some pressure on this one either expansion or compression simply what happens resistance value will vary so r4 will vary if any one of the arms of this bridge varies what happens simply the deflection shows so in unbalanced condition what happens we are calculating the voltage value because of the change in the r4 value okay this is how the strain is going to be measured in terms of resistance in the strain gauges now coming to the unbounded strain gauge this is the diagram we have taken to explain the unbounded strain gauge when a force is applied on the structure under study frames p and q frames p and q see the here we have taken two frames here uh, the upper part is nothing but p upper frame is nothing but p and lower frame is nothing but q so we are applying force on downwards see force direction is also given and it is the insulated pin these pins are used to connect the um, wire and this is the unbounded unbounded strain gauge with this gauge is connected like this okay to this pins and insulated pins so when force is applied on this structure under study frames p and q frame p moves relatively to frame q frame p q is relatively to frame q one frame is connected on another another one when we are applying some force on it they are moving so and due to this movement the strain gauge will change in length and cross section this that is the strain gauge is strained see what happens previously actually what happens uh, this wire is fixed actually it is a frame p frame and it is a q frame it is a p frame and a q frame these two are connected like this with some gauge wire between uh, in through these pins okay that wire is connected like this now what happens we are applying some force either in this direction or in the downward direction what happens the gauge will expand because of this uh, uh, movement in the frames the gauge will expand or compress depending upon the movement because of that the resistance will vary the strain changes the resistance of the strain gauge and this change in resistance of the strain gauge is measured using a Wheatstone's bridge this change in resistance when calibrated becomes a measure of the applied force and change in the dimensions of the structure under study so the, because of this movement in the frames the strain will uh, vary and that variation results the change in the resistance value we can calculate that resistance using the Wheatstone's bridge so second one is bonded strain gauge bonded strain gauge is nothing but it is con connected in a metallic frame so bonded strain gauge are so called because they are attached to elastic element surface elastic element surface previously there is no surface all uh, the entire gauge is open and no surface has been used but now we are taking a, an elastic element surface the most commonly used are bonded resistance type strain gauges 
they are preliminarily used for strain analysis in bonded resistance wire gauge gauge resistance element is cemented to the base which may be a thin sheet of paper or a thin sheet of bake light or teflon the bonded strain gauge is connected to the Wheatstone's bridge. Same, similar concept. Of, concept is same, but we are taking a bonded or unbonded. So here we are taking a metallic, um, what is that? <coughs> element surface, elastic element surface that we are connecting here. Previously, there is no such type of surface we are taking. Okay. Same, again the strain is applied because of that strain resistance value, strain will vary, so resistance will vary and that resistance can be measured using the Wheatstone's bridge. So there are several types of strain gauges are also there, torque type gauges and helical type gauges. This is the torque type. The first one is nothing but torque type. These two coming under torque type and it is helical type. And these are different types of strain gauges where we are connecting the wires in 90 degrees or in other angles where we are 45 degrees, 60 degrees like that. Okay, see two element 90 degrees planner sheeter Rosette strain gauge. Rosette strain gauge we have seen in the classification of um, strain gauges. So the last one is the Rosette type. This is the Rosette type, bonded and bonded and Rosette type is there. So in the Rosette type, we can uh, add, connect the strain uh, gauges like this, or we can connect the strain gauge like this, or it can it can also be three element type, nothing but 60 degrees. And it can also be a 45 degrees like this. That means when pressure is applied on particular strain gauge, it affects the remaining strain gauges also, so that the resultant resistance of these two will also vary. Okay, so these are the different types of strain gauges and their explanation. Thank you.